Welcome to the Crossboarding Interview Signature Series. From musicians to painters, from novelists to filmmakers, we're bringing you a diverse range of voices and perspectives, all united by their passion for the craft. And whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to the work, we're confident you'll find something to inspire and captivate you in each and every one of these interviews. They've already crossed the Rubicon. Now they're coming back. Saskatoon-based band Cedar Sky are heading out on a summer tour that represents their return to the concert stage after five long years. It's cause for celebration, and the band will be making the most of it with a set list that's weighted heavily towards their 2019 album, Crossing the Rubicon, while pointing the way towards exciting days to come. With that, Josh, Jesse, thank you so much for doing this. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having us. So before we get started, five long years off the road, now you're back. How's it feel to be back on the open road and toured and playing in front of large crowds again? Oh, it feels refreshing. Um, we we got in the van and we headed south to our first show. A little bit of nerves, and then we drove through like a tornado warning, storm ra- rainstorm. But uh, after last night, uh, it feels it feels refreshing, really. Like to get to get that show done. Uh, I feel I feel really good about today's show and the rest of the tour. Yeah, as soon as uh, as soon as you start strumming the chords, everything disappears, and you're like, all right. We're back here again. Yeah. And it just felt like home. Was there any nerves prior to getting on that stage in Regina last night? Or did it come natural as it says, just it's like riding a bike. Once you get back on, you can pedal away. There there was some added nerves too, because I don't know uh, if uh, many of our listeners are big uh, sports fans, but I know the, the Oilers were playing and they're uh, dear to my heart. So, so that was revved up and then that was gone. It's like, okay, all right, now we got this thing going on and um yeah yeah it was building up because you know we we stay in touch we play we rehearse we practice you know we we know our songs uh deep but when you get in front of a stage or get onto a stage in front of uh you know a ton of different people um it's a different experience so uh, a little bit of nerves but as soon as again as soon as we started playing it was uh it was it was where we need to be. Yeah, absolutely. The ante- anticipation of uh, some of my friends, family that hasn't seen us play the last five years, been talking about things in the works. So they're showing up. You got friends coming in there and just so excited to play for them and see them. I haven't seen some friends in years and years. So this is the first time they've actually heard us play. So yeah, nerves are high. But like Dewey said, as soon as you get into that first intro everything just washes away and you just play some rock music yeah so so as we talk you were in regina last night you're in rockland saskatchewan tonight as of recording this and it's gonna be out later on today then starting monday you're gonna be here in calgary cowtown the beautiful home of the calgary flames not the edmonton oilers i have to do a shameless plug there for all those calgary <laughs> listeners who are about to yell at me if i don't and then you're gonna be up in edmonton on the 25th jasper on the 27th and then back in calgary on the 28th and then heading home uh to saskatoon on the 29th that's a busy week ahead of you are you excited to crisscross the two provinces and see sort of western canned up close and personal <laughs> yeah uh seven shows in eight days yeah that's that's a pretty busy schedule but we can do it we know we can do it and what can people yeah. expect to hear at the shows tonight uh, in rockland in calgary in edmonton in jasper or in saskatoon it's gonna be it's gonna vary um, when we play in Calgary, Edmonton, um, you know, we're, we're weekdays. And so we're going to be focusing on uh, some of our main singles and uh, some of the heavy hitters from our album, Crossing the Rubicon. Whereas, say, tonight we're playing in a small town, Saskatchewan. People want to get out and dance. So we're playing We're playing all night. We're going to be busting out all of our songs and throwing in some uh, some classics that uh, everybody loves. Some hoot and holler and good time music, some sing-alongs and some crowd pleasers. Yeah, yeah. So your newest single, from what I understand, Hung Up is expected to be released this summer and I can imagine you're going to be playing it or you already have been playing it. How does the song Hung Up compare to your other show, uh, other songs, sorry, like Big Subway or Day Trippin'? You know, it's interesting our our song there's so much variety in all of our songs um in how they're written how they come about 
Um, you know, Day Tripping was a very socially focused song. You know, what's going on with everybody today? Um, how we're distracted. We're focusing on everything around us, but not the core things that are that truly should be important uh, important to oneself. Whereas Big Subway, it's um, a song that was very personal uh, to myself um, from a few years back. And um, it was more of just kind of some growing pains of uh, getting over a lost relationship. Whereas Hung Up, I think a lot of people are going to feel the pain. They're going to feel the torment. And, you know, it's um, it's raw. That's that's all I can really say about it. It's raw. It's uh, to people who have ever been in a relationship where maybe you're maybe you're younger and maybe you just get into a new relationship and you don't know this other person well, there's this dissonance between you two and this frustration that kind of, kind of builds. And um, it's just, it's an expression. I think people are going to love it. Yeah. As they did last night. Yeah. Yeah. Last night was the first time we've ever played it um, live. And I think it went well. Um, As far as the difference goes in feeling, um, I think Big Subway is is a, a tells a story on a certain side of things, and um, and I think it's almost like the 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 other version of Hung Up in a way, as I feel it. Anyways, it 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 like Dewey says, it's more raw, and it kind of touches on a different aspect. The other yes. side, yes. the other side, like Big Subway, kind of goes this one direction, and Hung Up is it's kind of like. It's its brother, you know, it, it, that's it feeling wise anyways. Hung up hasn't found the resolution that was found in Big Subway. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a different. What do you a, mean by that? It's a different. Well, so <clears throat> I don't, I, I don't like telling too much about the songs. Everybody kind of finds a different meaning in it. Right. But well, go. Uh, can I, I want to jump in here for a second because I, I found that with your music, when I was listening to your whole entire catalog from big subway day trip into saving grace, each of your songs has an uncanny ability to tell a story and it's a different story. And when I listen to bands, I often hear the same song, same melody, but each one of your songs tells a different story from a different distinctive perspective and it connects with someone and i'm assuming if i listen to it or someone else listen to it we're going to get two different perspectives out of the same song that's uncanny in 2024 to be able to write songs that connect with so many people but in so many different distinctive ways how does that come about in a band like cedar sky it's it's Dewey writing the songs. I, he's he keeps putting these songs out. Like we did the album, and and he lays out such a good slate for me to play and for us to play and create the sound. But uh, it just keeps surprising me one after the other. Day tripping, and then this big subway, like you said, the story. It takes you on this trip, and it tells this this story, and then hung up again. I don't know how he does it. It just keeps happening, and. And it's it's a fresh new story each time, and I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Keep doing it. <laughs> I I honestly I I wish I could tell you um, how I write. Um, well, I guess I can. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes you're sitting there focusing on one thing, and you leave it, and then you're doing something else completely different. And you just get a sense of something, or maybe you, you see an interaction in public or you hear something from people around you and like, Oh, that's what's going on. And then, you know, depending on what the universe decides, sometimes it turns itself into something that we can turn into a song. And yeah, I wish I could be less esoteric about that. But (laughs) so on that note, I recently watched an interview with an artist down in the States and he was talking about his abil- his writing ability and each one of his songs, whether it be from the lyric side or the, uh, uh, the, the uh, bass side, um, there, it feels like a child to them and it's hard to release the child out into the public. So when you looked at hung up and you started to think, okay, this is going to be our next uh, song in uh, sort of follow up to big subway. Did it take a little bit to say, okay, is this the song we want to follow up with? Because like you said, it is the little brother to the previous songs that you've released. 
that's not really the the thought that goes in into it. I don't like like thinking. Sorry, maybe I'm I'm not answering you correctly, but there isn't a lot of planning in regards to what do we want to write about and put out next. Like I like it's uh it's. I don't know some bands will do that like okay we got to do this we want to kind of ride off of this momentum and and that works for them but um sometimes when you're trying to put a uh, a square peg into a round hole you don't get the best result and so it's just whatever comes out comes out <clears throat> and um yeah that wasn't really a thought it was just like this this is it this is a cedar sky song and we say that because there, there's certain songs that really resonate with the hospital. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'll pipe down a little bit. Well, no, um, I think what we, well, I think it was October. We got together, we went through the set list, we played our songs and then a couple of new ones. And then Dewey had this, I let's work on this other one. And it was towards the end of our, our jam session that weekend. And we just kind of hammered it out. And I think, I almost think that had a little bit to do with the rawness of how that song ends and where the direction of it goes i mean and i mean i'm not i'm not dewey so this is just my perspective of it but it was kind of we were in a raw state we've already played all our songs we're getting sort of tired and i think that maybe had something to do with the drive of the how that song goes towards and it's it's heavy it's great um but we don't as far as i know we don't really plan that much it's it's what it's hard to it's hard to make a song, like create one. It's just what happens almost. I mean, Dewey comes up with an idea, writes the lyrics. We do our best to capture the feeling. And um, and I don't think it has much connection with the previous song or the song ahead of it. I think it just more naturally. I feel like we do it naturally, but it's it's interesting because I know Crossing the Rubicon, a lot of those songs were pre-written I had a good idea on how I wanted things to sound when we recorded them and when we actually went in to record them you know Jesse is the king of finding those little details those little nuances that can make a song elevate to the next level those subtle little intricacies that you hear throughout our album those are all Jesse and when we were doing it at first, you know, you have an idea and you get so locked in. And I remember doing Crossing the Rubicon. It was a lot of like, oh, I don't want to change. That. I don't want to change that. And then for day tripping, big subway and hung up after realizing how successful all the feedback and the contribution was. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to sit back. And the band really got a lot more involved to let it organically turn into something on its own rather than it being forced into one dimension that was initially thought may be the best result. Well, it, you're like literally picking up on the exact questions I'm about to follow up with. So it's perfect because your, your music genre doesn't fit just into the rock genre or the alternative rock genre. You span a large swath from Saving Grace, which is more of a mellow, uh, I don't want to say relaxful, but more of a, uh, uh, intimate story to uh big subway so you tell a range of stories but you do it in different ways how important is it for the band to not be so pigeonholed to one sort of method and just be fluid in the ability to tell the story whether it be through rock whether it be through pop whether it be through blues or through potentially even latin mind if i jump, jump please, in quick. please do there's so when i first met Cole and Jesse like they were in other bands and when we finally started jamming we actually we would jam like we pick up our guitars and this wasn't like a Cedar Sky session it was just a couple guys down in this dank basement that had so much magic in there from just years years of music and we would just free flow jam somebody would just start strumming one note somebody would take in and everybody was so focused on serving the song yeah. that it would just it would go on this journey from different genre to genre just flow and i think we really 
brought that into how we turn these songs into what they come out as. It's kind of like a Ouija board. You know? <laughs> a little like bit. We're yeah. all we're all we're all kind of putting our hands in there, but nobody's pulling too hard. And it just it 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 melts down and we all it, it comes out, nobody's pushing or pulling too hard. And really and and I've always thought serving a song is number one thing. Don't overplay. Um, and these last three songs, like I love the album, the Crossing the Rubicon album. I love that album. I'm one of the biggest fans of this band. And but these last three songs, you really feel the 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 connection. Like Dewey said, the the album was already kind of pre-written, and we do our own thing, kind of sparkle some magic on top of it. But it's really, really fun to start a song from scratch in a way and see see how it grows. But uh, yeah, that's it's it's a magical thing, and I just I really love this band. It it, it sounds like it. Um, so you are going to be out on tour through Alberta from the 24th to the 29th, back ending in Saskatoon. On this show, we always like to look forward. Now you have a summer release coming up of Hung Up, but what else can we expect for Cedar Sky over the summer? Because I'm assuming now that you've got the itch to get back on the road, you're not stopping on the 29th, and I'm assuming you'll want to get back out even more. You know what? I think as soon as we get this next single out, um, we're going to want to push it. And every time we do get together, this itch, it grows. And... Uh, I don't know the, the way that this tour is kicking off. It just, it makes us want to get out and play more. So uh, nothing really solid on the books as of yet, but once we start, you know, firming up dates of when that release is going to be, and uh, we know when it's going to go, we're definitely going to be looking at planning some things around that and uh, getting out and sharing this music to more and more people. Are you ready to either celebrate or sort of drown in sorrows if the Edmonton Oilers lose on Monday night as you head up to Calgary on Tuesday? You know what? I don't think it's going to affect us at all. You know, I might have like a mini, eh, you know what? You get used to it. My dad was a Leafs fan, so I grew up watching Disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm a Canucks well, fan, so you, you really can't hurt my feelings. Yeah. There, I'm a Ducks fan, so that tells you how much I know about sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I let you go, um, I just want to mention to anyone who's listening or uh, watching this, the uh, dates, the times, and the locations of all Cedar Skies events that are happening in Alberta, whether that be Calgary, Edmonton, or Jasper, Calgary again, or Saskatoon, are in the show notes. So highly recommend that you check it out because truly, you've got a new friend in Calgary, Alberta, and I'm looking forward to coming out on Monday to see you guys play live. So thank you so much, Jesse and Joshua, for doing this. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. Thank you.